um a predicted as ria can you please excuse me ria can you divide na lang the class into nine groups sige po ma'am <coughs> pero dapat sana on the spot para daw mas interactive pero i'm giving you time na lang para sumagot dun sa case pero um can you please limit lang yung sagot ninyo yung ipepresent ninyo sa class into one or one to three minutes lang siya to answer lang a particular um case and then from there um kung meron akong mga further na tanong to assess din yung um laboratory procedure kung naiintindihan nga talaga ninyo or sa so, kung meron ding tanong yung mga ibang classmates ninyo to correct yung mga misconceptions nila um pwede dun sa parang very short lang na open forum para question and answer portion after ng presentation ng group pero yung it yung case it's very short you can actually answer it like directly lang but you can actually expand para mas maintindihan din ng ibang kaklase din niyo so um lahat na ba naka-access ng third module rather at saka yung laboratory modules bago nag-down yung hindi pa po no man no po mm, pero meron ng ibang naka-access Hello? Yes. Nang naka-access. Um, kung sino man yung naka-access ng ng module na 'yon, pwede ring i-share niyo na lang dun sa classmates na lang din niyo. Kasi para hindi din naman sila kawawa at mabihain. But gusto kong mag sabi for the next two weeks. Gusto kong magpa-sorry kasi yung mga laboratory modules natin in one folder that will be five na kaagad na laboratory experiment. Pero, since nag-aantay pa rin tayo sa virtual laboratory, um, might as well, you know, you, you can actually watch na lang videos to check lang kung paano gawin yung mga laboratory procedures na yun. But, Kapag meron na yung virtual lab natin, maybe you can actually do like simulation ng mga procedures na yan. So any um, concerns pala with last week and then obviously this week, kung meron kayong concerns, wala naman. <clears throat> so sige, let's start. So, yung next na module, it would actually be talking about the different microbiological methods. So, it would actually range from microscopy, papunta din sa mga staining procedures natin. So, um, I think naman na-discuss na sa inyo yung microscopy, the basic concepts of microscopy ever since first year, zoology. Apo kami yung zoology, ma. Ay, wala ba kayong zoology, sorry naman. Uh, pero na-discuss na sa inyo yung, yung microscopy. Like, basic microscopy, the different parts of a microscope. Yes, ma'am. How to use it, how to take care of it. Clear na tayo dun. <clears throat> Hello? Clear na tayo dun? Sige nga, as assessment lang din. Miss Tenga, yun nandiyan dyan ka ba? Miss Tenga, eh? Okay, hindi siya nag-respond. Siguro she's somewhere else. Miss Bella Andres, may jan ka ba? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Miss Bella Andres, um, as a review lang sa microscopy, um, what are the two main principles of microscopy? Ano yung 
two main principles ng microscopy. <clears throat> ano? Hello. Ano? And Okay, magnification is one. Ano pa yung isa? Okay, and how do you differentiate the two? Yung magnification for month is total yung yung nasa objective plus Mm -hmm. And yung resolution? Resolution. Quality no Hello? Ano yung resolution? Quality. Yung? Quality okay, so when you say um, for that of microscopy, there are actually most of the books, they would actually say just two principles. Yun yung um, magnification, tama ka dun, and that of also resolution. So when you say magnification, obviously that's the main reason why we are using the microscope, di ba? In order to magnify, to enlarge the image that is actually seen dun sa microscopic field. Because most of the microorganisms, di ba, they are very small. And for that of resolution, that's the ability of a particular um, microscope in order to distinguish or in order to differentiate to particular objects as separate or different entities. So kahit nag-overlap sila, kahit magkatabi sila, they would still be um, different objects or different entities. That's actually for resolution. But according to Ian Scott's, meron pang isang principle that is actually um, being, uh, it's actually included in the field of microscopy. So, ano yung, um, ang tawag dito, ano yung third principle na yun? Miss Belandres, pick a number from 1 to 58, excluding you. 23 po. Ano? 23 po. 23, sino ka? Domingo Shiva. Ma'am. Yes, po, ma'am. Okay. Miss Domingo. Po. Ano yung third na principle? Ma'am, illumination po. Mm-hmm. Would illumination be like one of the groundworks ng microscopy? Why we are using it in the first place? Ma'am, yung illumination po para po uh, para po dun makita po yung specimen. Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually well, it's actually syempre built in dun sa microscope. But when you say kasi principle of microscopy, you would actually be referring to why it was actually utilized as that. So, yung third na principle na hinahanap natin would be contrast. So, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Domingo. So, uh, also by the way, you can actually record either um, yung audio niya or yung video para i-share niyo na din dun sa mga iba classmates ninyong hindi makakapasok sa video conference na to. So, um, 
um, balay din sa contrast. So, when you say contrast, that would actually be um, where a particular object will be stained, it will then be colorized para mas madali siyang ma-visualize. And para ma-differentiate siya yung organism or the object against that of a particular background or any debris that is actually present on the specimen of the patient. So that is actually with um, contrast. So sige, for my costopy, ano pa, basic, um, different, diba, when we would actually be utilizing that of yung ating magnification, diba, we are actually utilizing different objectives. Miss Domingo, please pick a number. 1 to 58. 30 po, ma'am. 30. Yung katabi niya yung tatanangin natin. 31. Simon, nandiyan dyan ka ba? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Simon, di ba sabi natin, uh, magnification is actually yung actually the most common na, na alam natin principle of a microscope. And we are actually utilizing different lenses. Diba? Different lenses, especially kapag gumagamit ka ng microscope. So, as a review, ilan ang magnification ng isang eyepiece or ocular? Ayan lang. Ilan ang magnification ng eyepiece or ocular lens? <clears throat> yung range. You can actually give me a range kasi magkakaiba yung uh, magnification sa bawat manufacturer. Ten times? That's actually the, the maximum but it would actually be tama lang din naman. But it, yung range niya would actually be from 5 to 10 times. Diba? That's actually for the um, ocular or that the eyepiece. And then we are utilizing three objective na lenses primarily but we actually have um, a fourth one. Diba? Always when you are using diba, that of a microscope you should always start with the lowest objective which is basically the scanner. So ilan ang magnification ng scanner? Uh, four times po. Okay, so four times siya. At ano ang color niya for your distinction? As compared to that of the other lenses. Ano ang color niya? Ano yung, yung color na nandun din sa rim nung um, objective lens? Para masabi mo, ay, scanner na siya. As compared to the same. I read okay. that. Okay, it's a red. So for your scanner, it's four times magnification and then being identified with that of a red color na parang piping niya. How about for the high power? High power, uh, wait, go. Blue po. Okay, in, and ilan ang magnification ng high power? Um, 40. Okay, and for the low power objective? But low power, uh, 10 times one. Or by. Hey, joke, ma'am, 10. And how about yung piping niya? Ano ma'am? Piping, yung color. Sabi mo, di ba, blue yung sa high power, ando naman sa low power. Yellow, ma'am. Okay, and for the OIO? OIO. White? Oh. Okay, and ilan yung magnification niya? Um, 100 po. Okay. At least give me a number from 1 to 59. Wag mo na yung salimang natawag na. Ay, 1 to 58 rather. Ah, wait po. Um, 20. Ay, hindi. Pinito Four? na lang dun sa... Ay, sige mo. 50 to 58. Eh, 
M the number. Fifty three. Fifty three. Dito ba si Tabangkura? I don't think so. Okay, wala siya. Wala nga siya. Sige, ano yung namang number na pinili? Saima? Ma'am? Ano yung unang number mo na pinili? 53 po? No, Ay, before four that. Before that? 4 po? Ah, oh, okay. Nandito ba si Mr. Agkawili? Ma'am? Okay. Mr. Agkawili? Ano na ulit yung formula for total magnification? <clears throat> ano na ulit yung formula for total magnification? Ma'am, M1 times M2? Ano yung M1? Um, linear magnification tapos ng objective lens, ma'am, and times the eyepiece mo. Oh, okay. So, it's actually for that of the ocular at saka yung eyepiece. So, if for example, you are using that of a, a particular ocular lens with a five times magnification coupled with a scanner, ilan ang total magnification mo? So, I piece na five times scanner. Tapos, scanner na gamitin mo. 20 po, ma'am. Okay, so you would actually have 20 times magnification. Um, Robert, pili ka ulit ng number. 13 po, ma'am. Okay. 13, kausapin natin yung katabi niya. Centeno. Ano dyan ba siya? Yes po. Okay. Ano dyan ba si Irish? Irish din niya. Okay. So, there are actually different types of microscope that we are using inside the laboratory. So, yung kanina ang mga nadidiscuss, it would all be bright field microscope. What particular microscope would actually be, would you utilize when you are trying to view a spirochete? Ano? Ma'am, di ko pa ayaw. Okay, so when you would actually be, um, sige, okay lang. So when you would actually be uh, trying to view that of a spirochete, you need a dark field microscope. So usually, yung nai-illuminate would actually be that of the microorganism, again, it's a very dark background. Uh, Miss Centeno, ano na ulit yung tatlong um, spirochete natin na species? As a review for dapat sana yung quiz ninyo. Ano na yung tatlong species? Miss Centeno? Ano yung ano po? Trepo na yung mapag... Okay. Ano pa yung, yung dalawa? Or trepo na yung maden? Borrelia po, tsaka leptospira. Okay, so those are actually the three spirochetes. And don't forget then, especially when we would actually be um, in the bacteria proper na, so we would actually need a lot of memorization kasi pangalan pa lang struggle na siya. So, 
Um, just send them a pick a number. A list. Um, ano po mo? 41 po. Okay. 41. Matias. Ayara. Miss Machas. Hello. Miss Machas. Um, what particular microscope would you use when you would actually want to view an antigen antibody complex or interaction? Iron, you can't come back. Hello? Okay, hindi natin siya na reading din. Sige, doon tayo sa katabi niya. Iron, nags... Sige, Iron, okay lang. Sige, uh, we'll move na lang dun sa next. Um... Miss Villa, nandiyan ka ba? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Miss Villa, ano yung... What particular microscope would you use when... when you would actually want to see antigen-antibody interaction? Fluorescent, ma'am. Okay, your fluorescent microscope. And ano na ulit, how do you define an antibody versus that of an antigen? Mom? Pa, how do you define an antibody and how do you define that of an antigen? Mom, antibody. Okay, ano ba ang antibody in the first place? Uh, produced by the immune system, ma'am? Immune. Yes. So if it would actually be produced by that of the immune system, um, what specific white blood cell would actually cause that of its production? <coughs> B cell, ma'am. And what do you call that B cell? Ano ba yung, ano ba yung tawag rather ng isang activated na B cell? So for that of the different white blood cells, if na encounter na niyo sa anatomy, um, once a particular B cell lymphocyte would actually be activated, that is what you call as a plasma cell, diba? And the plasma cells are the ones that are actually responsible for humoral immunity for that of the different immunoglobulins in yung ating mga antibodies. Ilan na ulit yung antibodies na meron tayo? Ilang antibodies meron in the human body? Anyone can answer? Lima po ba? Okay, so we actually have five different types. And, um, ano pa ba? Um, a particular antigen is a foreign material that would actually cause that of the emergence or existence of a um, antibody. And one partic what particular um, property of the immune system would actually enable antigen-antibody interaction? That is your okay. That is your specificity, diba? It particular organ, a particular antibody would only be specific to that of the antigen that caused that of its existence, and also memory. Because kahit matagal na, it would actually still be able to remember that of 
the antigen, yung foreign material. Kaya nga, di ba, there would actually be um, vaccines, di ba, that would actually enable you to create that of an antibody, and that antibody can actually last for a very long time. So, that's actually for microscopy. So, kapag okay na yung lens, you can actually just read through that of the modules, both for module 3 and the microscopy module dun sa laboratory. So, moving to that of the lesson proper. Any questions or you would actually want like to clarify lang with regards to microscopy? So, moving with, rather, moving uh, to that of staining. So, for that of um, staining, obviously, sabi nga natin kanina, contrast would actually be a very important principle that would govern the field of microscopy. So, in a microbiology laboratory, there are certain procedures that would require a stain for easier visualization para mas madaling makita yung organism. And there would also be the other procedure na hindi niya kailangan na staining procedure because stains they are also toxic to that of the microorganism it can also kill that of the microorganism but there are certain kasi na procedures na kinakailangan hindi talaga mamatay yung organism we need to observe them in their natural habitat in their undistorted or unaltered form and that would actually be number one the living or the natural state so when we would actually view a particular organism in the living or natural state, it would actually be obviously an altered and distorted, hindi nasira yung organism. The cellular processes, together with that of reproduction and some mga metabolic properties, can actually be further studied. And the most common reason why we would actually always resort to the living or natural state would be to observe that of its motility. So, Miss Malena, ano dyan ka? Yes, ma'am. Ano na ulit yung iba't ibang uh, structures for locomotion? Ano ba yung ginagamit ng mga bacteria for them to move? Cilia, ma'am? Mm, actually, we are the ones that would actually have cilia. Pero sa isang bacteria, ano yung mga different parts that would actually be utilized for locomotion? Hindi mm, ko sure, ma'am. Ano ba yung na-discuss natin last time? We have, di ba, your flagella. Okay. You also have your pili. And then, what particular modification na ng flagella yung ginagamit ng mga styrofoam para makagalaw sila? Um, <clears throat> corkscrew, ma'am? Anong gin... Anong particular structure? Kaya nagkakaroon sila ng corkscrew material. Um, yun yung motility niya. Ano yung structure? Modification siya ng flagella. Modification ng flagella. Hmm. 
So we have the ba yung HL filament, di ba? If naalala niyo siya, it's a modification of your flagella that's present in your spirochete that is responsible for the corkscrew motility. Another din, pero it's also for locomotion, but mainly for adherence, yun yung ating fimbri, di ba? So, kung yung um, HL filament will then be responsible for corkscrew motility, and then the flagella in general would actually be utilized for gliding motility. Ano namang motility yung present sa isang pilay? Sige, anyone can answer. Ano yung motility associated with your pili? Switching. Okay. okay, so you have your switching motility. So, most of this motility, yung motion ng microorganism natin, can only be observed, obviously, when they would actually be in the living or natural state. But the disadvantage of this particular um, type of bacterial identification would be the refractive index of yung ating cells. So it's actually somehow similar or close to that of water. Kaya ang hirap niyang tingnan. So you need to have a very sharp vision and you need to adjust yung um, illumination ng ating microscope together with that of the iris diaphragm para mas makita mo clearly that of the microorganism. So, zipagan, nandiyan ka ba? Zipagan, Mikey. Hi, ma'am. Um, si Pagan, ano yung, di ba, sab, di ba sabi natin, kailangan natin i-adjust yung microscope in order for us to clearly see that of the microorganism under it. And most of the microbiology procedures, we will be utilizing an oil immersion objective. Kapag gagamit ka di ba ng OIO, di ba kailangan malakas di ba that of the uh, light Yung illumination, sobrang lakas, nakabukas din fully that of the, eye, the iris diaphragm, yung aperture. And then you would actually place a cedar wood oil, di ba? Or that of yung kinatawag natin na um, oil, immersion oil, di ba? So, itong cedar wood oil, what is the main purpose kung bakit naglalagay tayo ng oil kapag gumagamit tayo ng OIO? Um, bakit kaya? Ma'am, feel ko ma'am para mag-refract mag na mabuti yung kila. <laughs> well, how do you define ba refraction or refractive index? Matatanong din yan naman sa inyo sa kistapat. Especially kapag nandun kayo sa manual um, histopathologic technique. Ma'am, yung, re ma ma yung refraction po, ma ito po ata yung pag-bend ng wave or ng light para maka para so that it can pass through a medium, ma'am? Okay, it would actually be the bending. When you say refraction, that's the bending of light. And then when you say refractive index, that would actually be the difference with regards to the bending of yung light in different medium, di ba? Pero yung main reason kung bakit tayo gumagamit ng ating um, oil, cedar wood oil, would actually be to prevent dispersion ng light. Kasi di ba sabi nga kanina, sobrang taas ng um, intensity ng ilaw, bukas na bukas din yung iris diaphragm. And there is a high tendency for this light rays 
to go in different direction. So, parang yung mga light rays would concentrate lang dun lang sa may microorganism or dun sa microscopic field that's under investigation. Kailangan natin ng OIO. So, to prevent dispersion of light. Okay? So, that's actually the main reason why you're using that of the cedar wood oil. Okay? Thank you, Ms. Dipagan. So, um, there are actually different techniques when you would actually be utilizing that of the living or the natural state. It can be through a wet mount technique or a hanging drop method. Yung wet mount technique, it's more commonly utilized in uh, mycology when you would actually be studying fungi, particularly dermatophytes. Pero paano ba uh, gawin yung uh, procedure na to? So wait lang. I'll show you a video. that of your hanging drop method. Ganyan yung type ng slide usually ang ginagamit natin. Yun yung meron siyang circular depression in the middle. So, hindi siya flat, totally flat na surface. Meron siyang, um, ang tawag dito, meron siyang parang hole in the middle. That would actually be the area kung saan natin uh, mo-observe yung paghang ng isang drop ng microorganism that will be placed dun sa cover slip. So that's one unique um, thing about the hanging drop. So, if you would actually observe dun sa ginawa niya with the inoculating loop, um, you would only need a small amount lang of the microorganism na ipi-place ninyo dun sa mismong cover slip for the hanging drop. Huwag masyadong marami kasi kapag masyadong marami, it would then be difficult na for you to visualize that of the microorganism. And always remember, when you are using that of the inoculating loop or the inoculating needle, you need to observe aseptic technique. So, paano ba yun? You need to first heat yung inoculating loop at saka inoculating needle together with that of the test tube or the other plate kung saan ka kukuha ng microorganism bago mo siya ilagay dun sa mismong glass slide or sa cover slip. And then, pagkatapos mong gawin yun, pagkatapos mong nilagay dun sa cover slip at saka sa glass slide, you need to again heat that of the loop and the needle bago mo naman ilapag dun sa mismong table mo sa lab to prevent any cross-contamination. So, there are certain, um, so yeah, you need to do uh, a septic technique. So, there are certain also na type of your glass slide that is actually different from the one with the circular depression in the middle. Yung isa naman, meron siyang boundaries to which nakasign na dyan yung parang um, area to which pwede lang mailagay yung microorganism para hindi na siya mag-overflow dun sa other parts ng uh, glass slide. 
At times, hindi na ginagamit for hanging drop, but it's actually best to still utilize yung may circular depression. So, naglalagay tayo ng paraffin wax dun sa edge para kumapit later yung ating hover slip. And then, so it's actually different, di ba? Hindi yung cover slip yung ibabagsak mo dun sa may glass line. Sa hanging drop, it's different. Yung um, glass line, yun yung ilalapat mo dun sa cover slip. You tend to flip that off the glass line. Yung area kung saan ka naglagay ng uh, paraffin wax, yun dapat yung didikit dun sa may um, cover slip. But again, don't press it too much kasi very fragile that of the cover slip. Pwede yung mabasag. So, okay na. Basta dumikit na siya. Okay. So, pagka tapos nun, and then flip it again over, kaya siya maghahang. Kaya siya bibitin yung drop ng inoculum natin or drop of the microorganism. So always, when using the microscope, start with the lowest objective. So if na observe nyo dyan, ito yung sa may drop. There would actually be little bubbles din within it. So, as you would actually increase the magnification, mas ma-observe ma ma mo yung motility ng microorganism. So, yun na. Yun, dun sa edge ng drop, makikita mo yung microorganism. And from there, if you would actually notice closely, meron tayong mga bacilli, meron din tayong mga cocci. Meron pang ang cocobacilli, parang ovoid. So that is your hanging drop method. Next, paano ba gumawa ng wet mount? Any questions pala with the hanging drop? Wala. So, for that of um, wet mount or any other procedure for that matter, you still need to wear your personal protective equipment, obviously, bago ka mag-start na kahit anong procedure. I think, nabasa na ninyo yan with that of your AUBF, di ba sabi doon, before any procedure, uh, practice that of hand washing, wearing that of the complete PPE properly. So, syempre, a wet mount, you would actually need a glass light and a cover slip. And you need, again, a clean, grease, or oil-free na glass light. So, papaano natin ma-maintain yung ganung type ng um, description with regards to that of our cover, with regards to that of our glass light, rather. So, kailangan hawakan mo yung glass light dun lang sa my edge. Huwag dun sa mismong body ng glass light. Or else, yung grease, yung oil from that of your fingers, Siyempre, may tatransfer dun sa mismo glass light. So, kung nakita niyo dun lang sa edge niya hinawakan. So, dito, in this particular experiment, you would actually be utilizing either a medium, a liquid one, katulad nito. Some specimens kasi, they would actually be directly coming from the patient. Ihi ng patient, yung sputum niya, yung mucus na nandoon sa 
uh, nasogastric tube, minsan yun na din mismo yung ibibigay sa laboratory. At yun na din yung mismo ang gagamitin mo in making that of a smear, a wet mount, and that of also a culture. It can also be, dun sa nauna mo ng culture, solid natin na medium, kukuha ka na lang ng colony. But always remember, when you would actually be utilizing a liquid medium, wag na wag ka nang magdidilute. Wag ka nang maglalagay ng deionized water. Mamaya malalaman ninyo, dun sa may solid medium, maglalagay siya ng um, deionized water. So kapag liquid na, again, wag maglalagay ng deionized water. You just add a drop of yung ating liquid medium and then make a smear. Or make yung ating wet mouth. So again, one drop, small lang na drop, wag masyadong marami. And then, if na-observe ninyo kung paano nyo nilagay yung um, dust light, wag yung kaagad ibabagsak mo yung glass light. Ay, wag na wag ibabagsak, rather, yung cover slip dun sa glass light. Again, um, kapag ganun, place the cover slip in a 45 degree angle with regards to that of the glass light and then gently ibababa mo siya. Again, wag ibabagsak or else magkakaroon tayo ng splashes. So yun, for that of a solid medium, pag na sa other plate, maglalagay ka ng one small drop lang ng ating deionized water. And then, practice a septic technique bago kumuha ng colony. So, kapag kukuha kayo ng colony, again, be gentle. Yung sa surface lang, iswipe mo lang siya dun sa end ng ating inoculating loop. Uh, common mistake, inaararo yung sa may agar. Um, madali kasing maararo yung agar, lalo na kapag soft pa siya, hindi pa masyadong nag-harden. And then, meron ng colony. So, kapag ganun, again, uh, be gentle lang dun lang sa may surface lang ng mismong agar. And, as much as possible, when you're doing any um, procedure sa microbiology laboratory, please naman, wag naman na kayo magsalita. Kasi yung saliva ninyo, yung drops ng saliva, it can actually be placed dun sa agar plate, it can be placed dun sa, sa glass light. At dahil dun, magkakaroon tayo ng contaminants. Okay? Also, um, common mistake din ng mga interns sa laboratory is that when they would actually be doing that of their aseptic technique or when they would sterilize that of their materials, ini-sterilize nila pati yung plastic Petri dish. Kapag glass yung Petri dish, yes, you can sterilize it. Pwede mo siyang ipadaan sa flame ng Bunsen burner or alcohol lamp or sa harap ng micro-incinerator. Pero kapag plastic yan, please wag naman na ninyong i-heat. Kasi mag-melt yung plastic, okay? So after doing yung um, spreading yung inoculum natin, again, do again na septic technique bago mo siya ilapag yung ating look dun sa mismong table para hindi ka din ma-infect. So that is your So that is basically the wet mount. So kapag wet mount, so di ba, basa pa talaga siya with the deionized water and then the mixture with that of the inoculum, yung ating microorganism. And you need to be very fast sa pagbasa. Kasi yung um, wet mount natin, um, it would actually be very easy kasi for it to dry. Lalo na kapag mainit yung surroundings, mainit yung environment, and then, yung um, illumination
naman pa yung light coming from that of the microscope, it would also cause that of the slide to dry easily. So, kailangan mabilis ka talagang magbasa. Kailangan mabilis mong hanapin yung microorganism na hinahanap mo. Or else, magda-dry na siya at wala ka nang makikita. So, any questions so far with the first two procedures, your wet mount and your hanging drop method? So, any questions? Guys, any questions? So, aside, yes. Mm, may question lang po. Yes. Mom. Ang nagpapos sa video, ma'am, di ba pinapadaan po sa uh, Bansan Burner po yung inoculation tool, ma'am. Ma'am, tapos uh, yung inoculation tool, ma'am, i-how doon? I-kukuha sa bacteria colony, ma'am, dun sa agar plate po. May epekto po ba yun sa bacteria, ma'am? I mean, di ba, ma'am, may mga bacteria po ba na namamatay dahil dun sa hit, ma'am, or gano'n? So, yun, when you would actually do that of your aseptic technique, Diba, i-heat mo muna yung inoculating loop and inoculating needle. That's correct. But, diba kung nakita ninyo dun sa video, kapag hinit ang metal, obviously, magiging parang orange or red siya yung color. It means that it's very hot. So, you need to wait a few seconds or a few minutes for it to cool down. Tapos, dun ka kukuha ng colony. Para ma-assure mo pa rin na buhay pa rin yung colonies na makukuha mo. And then, yun. If it's already cold. If it's already cold, you can actually get that of the colony dun sa mismong agar plate. And then you can actually place it dun sa gas light. So, yun lang yun. Actually, yung main um, uh, procedure on how to check if it's actually okay na to get a colony would actually be to place yung end ng no inoculating loop or inoculating needle. Sabi, actually, i ginagawa siya before. Pero hindi ko alam kung ganun pa rin siya. Yung parang ilapat mo lang siya ng onti, sandali lang dun sa may um, side ng hand mo if it's actually okay. But in your hand, it should always be, dapat naka-gloves ka, okay? And then ilapat mo lang siya dun. Pero ako kasi, if nung napapractice kasi ako sa lab, hindi ko yun ginagawa, yung nilalapat dito. Kasi malay mo, contaminated siya with that of the gloves. So, I'll just wait na lang for a few minutes or a few seconds na mawala na yung red or orange na color ng end ng ating inoculating loop. And then, doon na lang ako kukuha ng colony. So, any questions pa? Did I answer your question? Or would you actually want to follow up? Yes, no. I think it's up. Any questions pa? So, if wala nang question, let's move to another one, which is the stained preparations. So, sabi natin kanina, contrast. It actually provides contrast. Well, naturally, your microorganisms, they are transparent, di ba? Hindi siya madaling makita. Dahil, number one, ang liliit nila. They have a very small dimension microscopic dimension, sabi nga ng ilang libro, they would also have a very high water content. Kaya nga, they would actually seem to be invisible once suspended in a water medium or in a liquid medium. So, hindi sila madaling madetect. And especially, most of the specimens that are actually being given sa laboratory, hindi naman ganun kalinis, di ba? It would actually be very dirty kasi syempre galing from that of the words. And sometimes nahihirapin tayong makita yung microorganism uh, amidst that of the very dirty na background dun sa ating microscopic na field because of too much debris, too much artifact na nanggagaling dun sa specimen ng patient. Um, kaya nga tayo gumagamit ng ating mga stains. It's actually for us, basically, para mas maging madali yung trabaho natin at ma-identify kaaga yung microorganism. So it provides contrast 
the slides can be preserved. That is actually through that of your hit fixation when you are preparing that of your smear. And when you would actually be doing hit fixation, obviously, kapag pinadaanan mo nga dun sa may uh, flame ng Bunsen burner, namatay naman na talaga yung ating microorganism. So it's uh, safer to actually proceed with the said test with the microorganism that is basically killed. So less yung ating infection. But the disadvantage when using a safe preparation, sorry, So the disadvantage of using a stain preparation is that it's more complicated, it's more tedious to prepare. Ang daming mga reagents ang kailangan mong i-prepare. Kailangan din i-time mo siya kasi bawal ang understaining at saka overstaining. Kapag understaining, sobrang kulang, pwedeng na-wash out na yung ating microorganism or talagang wala ka talagang makita kasi hindi nga siya nakulayan ng mabuti. Or it can be overstained. So, sobrang dark naman ng color, wala ka nang nakita at all. And it's more expensive. Kasi nga, with the staining, um, different staining reagents na gagamitin natin. So, the main purpose of your staining procedure would actually be to observe and appreciate the appearance of the microorganism. So, we would actually be able to know the morphology, the arrangement, differentiate one microorganism or group of microorganisms also from another, especially in cases of poly infections, and also identification of microorganisms and their special structures like your capsule, your flagella, so yung mga yun. So, Mr. Diaz, Mr. Diaz, nandiyo dyan ka ba? Yes, ma'am. Um, as a review, ano na ulit yung dalawang species ng ating microorganism that's very well known for making a spore? Spores are actually a special structure ng isang microorganism. Nai-stain din natin yun. Ano na ulit yung dalawa na microorganism na species that are spore forming? Uh, ano, ma'am? Uh... Bacillus, yes. chaka, clostridium. Okay, so your bacillus PC and your clostridium. Um, sige, yun na lang muna for now. Baka may nasabi ko na yung buong quiz. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diaz. So, first thing, obviously we actually have different dyes na gagamitin natin. Again, this particular coloring materials, they would actually be able to, number one, highlight that of the microorganism, and number two, to differentiate the microorganism from that of its background or the debris and the other artifacts that are present in the patient's specimen. So we would actually utilize either a basic dye or an acidic dye. So Basic dyes are cationic dyes that are positively charged. And obviously, since positively charged sila, they would only be able to attach to negatively charged molecules or negatively charged structure of the microorganism. So, ano yung example na ulit ng mga negatively charged na structure ng isang bacteria? Ano na ba yung negatively charged na structure ng bacteria? Sige, anyone can answer. Okay, you're the ba that acid? Okay, they are the ones that would contribute to the negative charge of your cell wall, di ba? Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga gram-positive at saka yung gram-negative. So aside from the wall, so nucleic acids are also um, negatively charged. So they are being stained with that of the basic dyes. Um, 
Sabi natin, diba, that a particular microorganism doesn't have a true nucleus. Anong tawag mo na dun sa structure na meron sila na nandoon lang nakapulupot lahat ng uh, nuclear material nila? Nucleoid. Okay, that is actually your nucleoid. And the nucleoid can actually be stained with what particular stain na ulit? It's a nucleic acid stain. Your? Okay, your fulgen stain. Okay, very good. Ready na pala sa exam eh. Okay. So, an example of your basic dyes, you have the crystal violet, the methylene blue, the malachi green, and the saffronine. And most of microbiological techniques, ang ginagamit talaga, basic dye. Next, we also have your acidic dyes. Again, an ionic dyes with a negative charge. At since again, negative charge siya, Pakapit lang po siya sa mga positively charged na cellular structures. So, what is an example of a positively charged na cell structure? We have your proteins. And proteins are basically built on what particular cellular structure na ulit? Saan nabubuhay yung mga proteins natin? Okay, so ribosomes. At ano na ulit yung... Um, Sped verb unit that's very much present for a prokaryote, for a microorganism. Ilang sped verb unit? Ano? 70. Okay. Very good. Ready, ready na pala sa exam? Okay, so an example of your acidic dyes, we have eosin, acid pochine, and that of also your nigrosine. And always take note, Bacteria are generally negatively charged at the pH of 7. So, wag na wag kakalimutan yan. So, again, the negative charge would always be attributed to that of the cell wall. So, for that of the different steps na sa ating staining procedure. So, when you would actually be preparing for a staining test or a staining procedure in the lab, always... Prerequisite, you need to prepare a smear, a bacterial smear. So smears are a thin, dry film of microorganisms. And in the laboratory, we actually have two types of smears. We have the direct smear and the indirect smear. Ano bang pagkakaiba nila? So kapag direct smear, it's preparation of a bacterial smear directly, kaya siya direct, directly coming from the patient's specimen. So, pagkabigay ng urine, pagkabigay ng um, sputum or fecal material, gagawa ka kaagad doon ng smear. That is a direct smear kasi directly coming from the patient. So, uh, this particular type of, type of smear is actually utilized in order to determine the number of cells and the type of cells that are present in the specimens. So, hindi lang microorganism ang hinahanap natin dito. It can also be that of the white blood cell or it can also be an epithelial cell. An example na lang din sa ating white blood cell, kapag sa hematology, papapagawan um, kayo ng uh, blood smear, for example. Yun, directly coming from the blood of the patient. So, that is a direct smear. But, when you would actually be doing any type of smear sa loob na isang microbiology laboratory or any microbiology uh, staining procedure or any other procedure for that matter sa microlab, always naman ginagawa siya under the biosafety cabinet. Para, di ba, sabi dun sa AUBF natin, it's actually a way of protecting ourselves from splashes or aerosols coming from the specimen mismo ng ating patient because it's actually the number one the source of infection that affects healthcare workers, particularly med techs inside that of the laboratory. Yung mismong specimen. Um, I think meron naman, nakita na ninyo yung biosafety cabinet sa clean lab? Nakita ba ninyo yun? Yung parang napakalaking table dun with a glass covering it. That's actually needed in order to protect particularly your mucous membrane, from splashes or aerosols from the patient's specimen. So usually, doon siya ginagawa. At saka para i-prevent din yung mga droplets din ng saliva natin to come in contact with the other plate 
or dun sa slide na ginagawa natin para hindi magkaroon ng contaminants. And when a particular clinical specimen will then be delivered sa laboratory, pagka-receive mo, for example, ng isang um, urine specimen or sputum or blood specimen, hindi lang po smear ang gagawin mo, kundi maglalagay ka din ng um, inoculum or maglalagay ka din ng mismong specimen dun sa culture media natin, dun sa mga agars. Pero for now, since we are talking about the smear, uh, don't get discouraged or don't get confused if later, pagkakita ninyo dun sa smear na ginawa ninyo, walang nag-grow or wala kayong nakita kahit anong microorganism. But dun sa in-incubate ninyo na agar plate after 24 or 48 hours, bigla kayong nagulat na meron palang tumubo na microorganism. Meron palang colony na nagawa dun sa mismong agar plate. There are certain occasions na nangyayari yun. That's actually because if you are dealing with, number one, a slow-growing organism. So kapag masyadong mabagal yung pag-grow niya, hindi ka agad nakikita dun sa smear. You would actually need some time for it to grow. Like for example, your mycobacterium species. It would actually take about two, three, at most four weeks a month bago may mapatubo ka talaga dun sa mismo other plate. You can also be dealing with an organism that is requiring a very special nutrient. Like for example, blood. Like your hemophilus species. It would actually need blood for it to grow. So hindi mo siya kaagad makikita sa smear. It can also be na mali yung process na nagawa mo. There would actually be errors dun sa paggawa mo ng smear, kaya hindi mo siya nakita. And then eventually, um, binarify mo lang, kinounter-check mo with the plate, meron palang tumubo. And lastly, another reason is that maybe the patient is taking an antibiotic at dahil dun, bumaba yung kanyang bacterial density. So, Dun sa smear, wala ka kaagad nakita. But after some time, dun sa mismong specimen niya, kapag dun sa, nakita mo dun sa in-incubate mong agar plate, biglang may tumubo. So those are actually the reasons why there is delay in the observation or in that of the growth of particular colony. So another type, aside from the direct smear, would be your indirect smear preparation. So kapag indirect smear, this is a particular uh, type of smear that is obtained from an initially grown nanoculture. So meron ka nang napatubo dun sa agar plate at dun ka nakukuha ng specimen for staining procedure sa paggawa ng iyong bacterial smear. Okay? So kapag direct smear coming directly from the patient specimen and then kapag indirect smear, it would be coming from a particular agar plate. It can be solid, semi-solid, or yung liquid natin na broth na medium. Again, always remember, in ulit ko, kapag liquid broth, wag na wag na pong magbibig. Wag na wag na maglalagay na deionized water para hindi bumaba yung ating bacterial density at para meron talagang makita or ma-check na microorganism dun sa mismo um, smear, dun sa mismo slide. And actually, a liquid broth is actually... Um, but it's actually more preferred as compared to that of a solid or semi-solid natin na media. Kasi for a liquid broth kasi, mas makikita mo yung morphology, yung arrangement, yung structure ng mismong microorganism as compared to that of a colony present dun sa isang solid or semi-solid natin na agar plate. So, in preparing that of a smear for staining, again, you need to prepare di ba, that of a microscope slide. And obviously, um, yung microscope, uh, microscope slide natin, it should be clean, grease-free, oil-free. Again, that can be done by holding it dun sa edge lang ng ating slide. And then, very important na part would be labeling. So after na ilabas mo na yung mga materials, you need to also label that of the slide. Kasi very... Uh, critical na process yung labeling. It's an important source of your pre-analytical errors if na-encounter nyo na yun sa inyong clinical chemistry. Kapag hindi kasi nalilabel ng mabuti, mas magkakaroon lang tayo ng confusion dun sa processing and eventual uh, release of yung mga results natin, di ba? So, 
you need to label properly that of the slides. And when you are actually labeling, anong mangyayari doon? Doon sa mismong slide, yung area kung saan ka nag-label, it should be on the opposite side kung saan ka maglalagay ng stain. Always avoid contact between the dye doon sa marker na ginamit mo and the dye for the staining. Dapat hindi sila magkasama together kasi it can actually cause confusion doon sa ating staining technique. And again, sabi nga dito, apply only a small amount of the sample. So, huwag masyadong marami kasi kapag super thick, avoid a very thick, very dense natin na slide kasi mahihirapan ka lang din maningin, di ba, doon sa mismong microscopic field. Nag-overlap yung mga cells. Mas mahirap mag-identify ng ating microorganism. So, only a small amount of the sample to the center of the microscope slide and then spread the sample evenly and thinly around the center of the slide. Again, that is actually to assure na wala talagang mag-overlap dun sa mismong microscope field natin. And um, a good quality stain is directly related to the quality of the smear. Obviously, magiging maganda lang naman yung magiging staining procedure natin. If in the first place, yung unang step pa lang, yung paggawa ng smear, maganda na. Ano ba yung qualities of a very good smear? So, a very good smear would actually have a thin, whitish na film or layer that once it would actually be a place against that of a newsprint, mababasa mo pa yung letters, yung a new spread dun sa likod niya. That is actually a very good smear. So, well-prepared smear, smear will have a thin layer of cells to allow individual cells to respond to the staining procedure. Hindi so, nag-overlap yung mga cells and it will allow that of the cells to take up that of the stain. So, after so after um, making that of the smear, you need to air dry muna. So you need to air dry bago mo siya i-heat fix. So kapag heat fixation, either through a direct flame ng Bunsen burner or that of an alcohol lamp or steam fixation, and then it can also be through certain agents like your alcohol, your acetone. Those are the different chemicals that are utilized for fixation. And this particular step is very crucial din kasi do not overheat that of the microscope slide. Kasi yun nga, pwede mamatay that of the microorganism. Sa so dahil dun wala ka nang ma-observe na mabuti dun sa slide. Kasi patay na sila, they are all distorted, they are, they are all destroyed. So you can actually heat that of the slide but not to the point na maabot niya na yung burning point or burning na temperature ng ating slide. So, the purpose of fixation is to basically kill the microorganism and to fix them to the slide. So, the cells will then be sticky. They will actually adhere to the slide. So, this is actually needed to prevent yung wash out na tinatawag natin. Para kapag nire-rinse mo na siya, after mo ini stain, di ba, i-rinse mo siya with that of the ionized water. Hindi siya madaling matanggal. Yun naman din yung isang purpose ng ating fixation. To also increase the apparent diameter of cells, to preserve various parts of microbes in their natural state with only minimal distortion. And again, sabi nga, we have heat fixation through that of the Bunsen burner or that of the alcohol lamp. And your methanol fixation. So it's 95% methanol for one minute, but depending on that of the procedure and also the protocol of the hospital, or that of the clinic. Magkakaiba kasi. And with methanol fixation, it's actually safer as compared to that of heat fixation because it actually tends to preserve that of the morphology of the host cells while trying to subject that of the microorganism to less stress. Hindi mo na siya uh, ipapadaan sa flame. Diba? Ilalagyan mo na lang ng ating methanol. So, especially useful for examining also bloody specimen material. And then after your heat fixation, you can actually be, uh, you can actually uh, proceed with that of the staining na natin na procedure. So, the staining proper. So, with the use of your basic acidic or your neutral dyes. And 
the different um, sealers can actually um, take up that of the stain through different methods. So it can actually be through physical means, either through absorption. It can take up no mga cells dun sa smear, yung uh, dye inside that of the cell, or it can be absorption, tinitake up niya lang dun lang sa mismong surface niya, dun sa kanyang cell wall. It can also be through osmosis, through the movement of water and that of also solutes, and capillary action. Or it can be through chemical means, ion exchange, with that of the positive at saka negative charges that are present in that of the structure of the bacteria. So that is actually for your smear preparation. So, any questions with smear? Meron bang katanungan? So, if walang tanong, we will proceed with the staining technique. So, we actually have three different types of your staining technique. We have your simple, differential, and the special staining. But, with the limited time that we have, excuse me, ang may iwan na lang would be um, simple staining. So, simple staining, kaya siya tinawag na simple staining kasi isa lang yung stain na gagamitin natin. So, it would only utilize just one stain in order to highlight the entire microorganism so that cellular shapes and basic structures are visible so that they can be easily seen and easily differentiated against that of their background or that of the other debris and artifacts coming from the specimen of the patient. So a stain is applied to the fixed smear for a certain length of time. Magkakaiba kasi depende sa procedure. Uh, depende din sa protocol ng ating hospital or clinic. And then after that stain would actually be applied, it will then be washed off. I-rinse natin siya. And then it will be dried and then eventually examined. So for that of your simple staining, it would actually be a very quick procedure to identify if the specimen coming from the patient ay eh, meron bang bacterial pathogen. So, pa, yun yung usually na reason kung bakit tayo gumagawa ng ating simple staining procedure. So, for simple staining, basic dyes are the ones that are basically preferred as compared dun sa mga acidic. So, we have the badet of your methylene blue, your crystal violet, yan yung carbol fushin, safranin. So, we would actually... Under it, we have your positive at saka your negative simple staining. So kapag positive or direct simple staining, the cells will actually have the same color as that of the stain. So kapag methylene blue ang ginamit mo, ang magiging kulay ng cell ay blue. Kapag crystal violet, it would actually be dark uh, blue or violet or sinasabi nilang indigo. And then kapag negative or indirect staining, the cells will be colorless, transparent, luminous, at yung i-stain niya, yung background, hindi yung mismong microorganism. So an example would be your Inja ink and also your negrosine. So wait lang, merong video for that. So if na observe ninyo it would only um create that of 
yung yung marker natin would actually be able to mark that of the limits kung saan tayo pwedeng maglagay ng ating smear para mas maayos siya. And if it's actually a solid medium, mas malaki yung diameter as compared to that of a liquid medium. So, if na-observe ninyo, dun sa opposite side siya naglagay ng mark, opposite that of the area to be seen. So, again, a small amount of your deionized water and proceed with a septic technique for sterilization ng mga materials. So, kapag nagganyan na siya, orange or red, wait for a few minutes or seconds bago kumuha ng ating colony. So, again, very gentle lang dun sa surface. Huwag mong araruhin yung mismong agar. And then, spread it evenly and thinly para mas madaling ma-visualize. And then air dry, always remember air dry before fixation. So kapag nag-dry na siya, you can just heat fix it by passing it two or three times dun lang sa flame. And then since simple staining to, so just one dye yung gagamitin. It's best that you would actually put a lot dun sa circle lang. But don't over flood it. Kasi kapag nag-over flooding, magkakaroon din tayo ng over staining na result. So it would be over stained. Wala ka nang makikita. Very thick. And then you rinse it eventually after a particular amount of time. Rinse it and then you can actually blot dry. Pero since in a third world country, at lalo kapag nasa government, na hospital or clinic, wala tayong yung Biblos paper. Wala tayong gagamitin for blood drying. So, air dry na lang ulit natin. So, you would actually see naman, di ba, yung stained na smear as compared to the unstained one. And then observe under the microscope, starting with the lowest objective. So that is basically your simple staining procedure together with the smear preparation. So any questions with the videos dun sa mga procedures na nakita ninyo? Especially dun sa last one. My questions pa ba? Hello? Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, good morning po. Ano? Ma'am, wala po bang alternative ang deionized water? Pwede distilled or pre-treated water. Pwede lang din naman. Ma'am, for example, routine po, eh, we, will, we will utilize distilled water po. I mean, the routine... Hmm? Pero, I mean, distilled water, ganun na lang po. Yes, pwede lang din naman, you can actually utilize it. But in the laboratory kasi, ipaprovide na din yun sa inyo. Kaya yung mga pre-treated water nila. So, that's 
physically okay naman na. But, okay po. But yun nga, um, if, hindi kasi ninyo magawa eh. Ang, hindi ko kasi alam kung paano din yung simulation lab na sinasabi nila if natutuloy yung sa virtual. Honestly, hindi ko alam paano yung sa may virtual laboratory. But for now, we need to make use na lang of the videos. But yun, ideally, it's deionized. But you can actually utilize distilled or any other pre-treated water for that matter. So any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? So for tomorrow, if okay na yung lens, we can proceed with your exam, with your quiz. It will be 15 items, siya na quiz. That's also good for 15 minutes. One minute per item. Hindi, dapat daw sana 30 seconds kasi madali. Pero sige, um, since first time yun naman mag-quiz, sige, um, giving you benefit of the doubt. So giving you that particular freedom. So, ginawa ka lang one minute per item. But, um, I still do want you to remember yung mga basic structures. Kasi from there, lalo na kapag muna tayo sa bacterial proper, very important na malaman ninyo, yun pa rin yung mga basic structures na yun ng isang microorganism. What are their differences with that of a eukaryote? how they are being affected by antibiotics, what particular parts of it are being stained or being colored. So, once na pumunta natin tayo tomorrow with that of the differential staining at saka yung ating special stains, um, in order to make your um, learnings easier, um, it's, I would actually recommend na gumawa kayo ng table. Magagamit niya din kasi yun, lalo na kapag review na ninyo for the boards para hindi kayo mahirapan na basahin lahat ng ating um, staining procedures. So, it's best to make a table. So, on one column, nandun yung name ng procedure. Then, the next, it would actually be the principal ng procedure na yun. And then, followed by another column involving the different reagents that should be placed in reagents and the steps, obviously place in a proper order. Like, for example, yung sa ating gram stain. Diba? We have yung vias. Yun yung mnemonics natin. Uh, crystal violet, iodine, um, acetone or acid alcohol, and that appears saccharin. So, in that particular column, ganun sana yung ilalagay uh, in a particular order. And then last, syempre yung result, kung anong kulay ng isang gram positive dun sa isang gram negative. So, ganun, para mas madali yung pagbabasa ninyo. At saka, para talagang maalala pa ninyo up until your board exam. So, um, for next meeting, uh, magbibigyan na lang ako ng PowerPoint na may recording that would actually um, involve differential at saka yung special stains. But for the staining procedure, please do take note of yung principal, the reagents, and the results kasi yun talaga yung pinaka-importante. So, any questions pa? Ano? 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 Sorry. Sorry, hindi clear. Average ng quiz, ma'am. Wait lang. Sorry, hindi talaga clear. Ano yun? Can you please write it na lang sa chat? Ma'am, average daw po ng quiz. Ano, ano? Coverage daw po ng quiz, ma'am. Ano? Uh, so, sorry, ano yun ulit? Coverage po. Nang ano? Nang quiz daw po, ma'am. Ah, yung bacterial structure lang muna. Yun lang naman, for now. Thank you po, ma'am. So, dun sa, dun sa quiz for tomorrow, if okay na yung lens, ha, um, please read yung module, and then don't forget to also read yung suggested reading dun sa Jowets. That would actually involve your eukaryotic cell and your prokaryotic cellular structures. So, yun. Because you need to still know the differences. And, um, kung hindi pa rin siya matuloy tomorrow at kung down pa rin yung system, 
we have no choice but to move that of the quiz next week. But next week, dalawa na yung quiz ninyo with that of microbial methods that will involve microscopy at saka yung staining. So, mas dadami at dadami lang siya mag-accumulate. But I will not give the quizzes on the same day. Kunyari, dito sa, um, kunyari, on Wednesday isang quiz and then Thursday the next. And for that of the case na ibibigay ko, um, Ria, nandiyo dyan ka pa ba? Andito po ako, ma'am. Ria. Um, pwedeng magbigay ka mamaya sa akin ng list ng uh, students, nine groups, all in all, and then choose a leader na lang for each group. Yung mga bawat uh, subgroups, they can choose a leader na lang nila. And then, tomorrow, for assessment lang, for assessment of your learning, I will actually give the PowerPoint na din today. Um, for assessment lang din, um, tomorrow, yung first group yung magpa-present na tomorrow, and can they just like prepare like one slide lang to answer lang yung tanong dun lang sa mismong case. So, to actually not burden yun na lang din para at least ma-ready na din ninyo yung sagot na lang din ninyo. Um, this would actually be the case. So for group one, please prepare for an answer for this case. So because of a snowstorm, your regular lab session was canceled and the gram staining procedure was performed on cultures incubated for a longer period of time. So examination of the stained serious, bacillus serious slides revealed a great deal of color variability ranging from intense blue to shades of pink. So, bakit naging ganun yung resulta? So, in one particular slide lang, or one per very short lang, you would actually, um, hindi man tabulate, you can actually bullet lang kung bakit naging ganun yung resulta, and then, you can actually expound also that of your answer. Very short lang. The presentation should only be limited to two to three minutes. Just to assess lang kung meron kayong natutunan dun sa PowerPoint, if you've actually understood that of the PowerPoint. Mamaya, ibibigay ko lang din yung PowerPoint. And for those individuals who cannot actually join din tomorrow, but are included dun sa first group, um, they can actually like video na lang themselves of their response and then ipapalabas na lang din ng kagrupo nila kung hindi sila makakadalo tomorrow. Just to assess lang. But it would actually be included dun sa grade ninyo for um, ang tawag dito, student engagement. So any questions so far? Ma'am? Yes. Paano po yung sa groupings? Uh, random po ba or? Alphabetically arranged na lang. Sige po. Siguro, para mas madali. So yung first, kasi kung nine yun. So six. First group would actually have six members. So yung first six individuals, they should prepare. And then yun, prepare din for a follow-up na presentation. We'll just limit lang yung presentation lang ninyo. Masyadong mahaba ng 15 minutes. Ililimit lang natin dun. So, parang assessment lang siya. Kung naiintindihan ba ninyo yung gram staining, acid fast, mga special stains, yun lang. So, be prepared na lang din, not just to answer yung case, but for any follow-up, coming from me and coming from your classmates, yung mga audience tomorrow. Pero ililimit lang natin, sobrang iksi lang. Para lang may evidence tayo din na nasabing you're really interactive 
in very in every discussion na meron tayo. If ever may magtanong dun sa grade niyo for student engagement. So any questions? Okay, so if wala nang tanong, let's call it a day. To, um, if tomorrow meron quiz, if meron na yung lens, so be prepared for it. But if not, let's move it na lang for next week. Wala tayong magagawa. Okay, so eh, again, that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.